Shark Week continues. <clears throat> I've got uh, a little, a little, another little great white shark that I'll be working on carving tonight. Um, so this is, yeah, that's what I'm going to be working on tonight. I'll start with the teeth. Nice little sharky smile. We have a rainy night here in Atlanta. I don't know if you guys can hear the uh, the thunder going on. It's been raining here for a while. Or at least it's not as bad as it was the other morning, but we got some weather coming through. Outline the shark's teeth, and now I'm going in and getting the uh, the inside bits out with this little tiny little Z gouge. I didn't quite get it all up here. Popping these little bits out. Get the top of this little corner of the mouth out of here. Uh, no music while you work. Yeah. Um. So I'm. I do listen to things just generally when I'm working. Um. But if I'm doing a live stream, 
I can't really listen to anything because I'll get I'll get kicked off. But generally, I'm listening to like a podcast or the radio, or um, I've got a TV show on or something on on Amazon Prime or something, something like that. But when I'm doing a live stream, I don't have anything on because because of copyright stuff. And it's a little bit more relaxing. No problem, Zach. I hope you're doing all right. How many pieces do I create and carve in a week? Um, it, it depends on the week. No two weeks are the same. Um, it's really hard to say. Um, and some, sometimes I'm working on projects that are a little bit more complicated than others. Um, this week I've got eight sharks that I'm working on. But that's not all I'm working on. I got I got some commissions working on that I need to do this week. Also, um, I've got a couple freelance jobs that I that I'll be working on in between doing sharks. So it's really hard to say. And then I've got like little personal projects that I'm working. Um, I'm sorry that I can't like answer that a little bit more precisely for you, but it's it's quite. Uh, like I said, no two weeks are exactly the same, and there's different demands. For each week. I mean, I wish I could just sit here and carve all week. That'd be really nice, but I can't. I can't do that.
then I'm also, I'm also, my workflow is very, it's probably not unlike most artists, but it, uh, like I've always, I've always got something in the ready to carve stage. I've always got something in the, you know, waiting to get finished stage. Um, I'm always, I'm always sketching out new ideas and new projects. Um, so these, these ones I actually sketched out last week and then put into production this week, but I'll take like 10 minutes or 20 minutes to sit down and do a drawing, get an idea out and then I'll move on to something else. And then once I'm done working on that, I'll move on to something else. Like go print some t-shirts or today I printed, um, I printed packaging for a product. Um, and, and some t-shirts. Today was more, mostly a production day where I was just taking care of uh, things that needed to get printed. So if you ordered a t-shirt from me within the past two or three days, it got printed today. Um, tomorrow is likely going to be a carving slash internet day where I, uh, I do some, get some stuff ready for the internet. Um, some, some YouTube content put out there and then take some photos for a new product and possibly post that new product tomorrow, possibly post it on Wednesday. Now, so we have to get an application out to a show coming up here in October. I think is when the, that show is. So I got to get that in the mail tomorrow as well. So. And my evenings are generally devoted to hanging out and and then late at night between like 10 and 1 is when I work some more. So I work between like, let's say I work between like 10 and 5. And then I would do some more work between like 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. And then I do more work between, you know, 10, 30, 11 and 1. Just tie up the loose ends of the day. And this is also my more relaxing time. Or I do the things that I didn't really, I didn't get to do during the day that I kind of wanted to do. Unless I'm up against a deadline, then I do things that I have to do. For example, a couple, I guess it was two weeks ago now, when I was working on the Tiny Doors ATL pieces, um, I, w I, was, I was working on those constantly because I had a deadline to get up that I was up against. This week, I have all personal goals, which is going to be really nice and a really nice change for me. Mostly, let me say mostly personal goals this week that I've got to go for.
Um, the Bramble Shark. When will I carve him? Let me think, let me think. Sometime this week, for sure. Um, it's not going to be tonight. I'm a little sleepy tonight. So I wanted to pick a smaller one that'll, uh, I can get done a little quicker. He's, he's a little larger. Um, because I like the sketch. But not, he's not huge. He's just bigger than, you know, this. Because this is a small one. What if, what if I carved it tomorrow during the day? I think I can, I think I can swing that a tomorrow during the day live session. Does that sound, does that sound good? And as always, I always post all my live sessions on, um, on YouTube a few days afterwards for anyone that has missed any that they would like to see. And it'll, if I, if I carve it, um, tomorrow during the day, I'll leave it up on Instagram all day too. So you can, uh, click through my, my live story and see how it came out. But I think, I think tomorrow during the day is going to be a good day. Cause I want to switch up. I've done, this will be my second great white. And I've done one hammerhead, and I've got a couple more hammerheads and a couple more great whites. So I do want to switch up the types of sharks that I'm working on. And I also want to get them all carved before like Thursday so I can paint on Friday. Oh, I guess I can paint. Mm, yeah, I want to paint on Friday. That's my goal. That's one of my weekly goals, paint on Friday. So I can get them done in time, in a timely matter, manner. And this is all a personal goal for me though. Any tips on how how deep to carve so the negative space doesn't get ink on it when making prints? Um, you know, I carve very deep. I kn I've I've met a lot of printmakers, and out of all the printmakers that I've personally met, I'd say I carve the deepest. Um, that I've seen their blocks. There's, so there's a lot of people that I haven't actually seen their blocks, but the blocks that I've seen, I've carved, I, I feel like I've carved pretty deep and comparative to most printmakers. Um, but I've also met printmakers that carve super shallow, like they're just basically scratching the surface of the block, and uh, they get pretty decent results. I think part of it is how you ink it, too. I like to I like to print quick and fast and dirty. Um, I like to, to get in and get out and get and get it over with. 
Um, so I will go and reinforce my edges and make it all clean. I, I had the pleasure of um, holding an old Japanese wood block in my hands once at a at a print fair here in Atlanta at the High Museum and it was quite impressive. Um, the block was you know it was probably the, the wood itself was probably about a half inch thick at the beginning and the parts that they wished not to get printed they had it carved down to maybe it was definitely less than a quarter maybe even closer to like an eighth of an inch they had it carved down um and the way that they that they carve is they don't use a v-gouge or anything they just they use two um I actually have a tool similar they use can you see what this, this is just a flat like a knife tool like that they use tools like that and then they come on on either side of the line in two different directions however they want to carve it and just carve it down to the bottom and the parts that they didn't want to get carved no matter how small was so far down into the block and completely smooth so and their their prints you know you've, you've seen it the, the results that they get are just so clean and so beautiful um, but they're also very controlled. I'm not familiar with your work enough. I know a lot of printmakers rely on, um, you know, the, the mark making of the tools, which can be beautiful in itself, rather than just like the, the, the line work that you can get. Um, so that's what, that's what I'm trying to achieve in this, this area up here is the, the mark making. I want to maintain that but in areas like this like I carve really a much much deeper it's probably twice as deep here than it is up here so it really just depends on the, the effect that you're trying to get but the I will say the deeper you carve the cleaner and faster you you'll you'll arrive at your prints um, you just you don't have to be as careful and linoleum is very easy to like get overly detailed and overly simple. Um, there's, there's a lot that you can do to make the prints. I don't know what level of, um, you know, at what level of printmaker you are, if you've you know, gone to school for it or, or what, but there's a lot of like additives that you can add to the ink to make the ink stiffer or the ink looser, depending on what you need to do. If you if you got a real shallowly carved um, block, you probably would want the ink to be pretty stiff. Like I know for engravers, you want it to be real. Um, you want it to be real oily, but also stiff enough so it doesn't drip down into the the, the finer carved areas of the block. So it just depends. Yeah, God, I'm just getting back into it and made mess really. Yeah, it's, it's, um, there, there's a lot, it's, there's a lot of technical aspects in working with woodcut and you just have to find out what works for you because what works for me is going to be different for what works with you. This is one of my favorite parts. It's kind of like the... It gives it a nice organic feel and also adds to the shading of it. I like breaking up the lines, the carved lines.
what's the medium that I'm carving? This is this is MDF medium density fiber board. It's hard like wood. Very flat and smooth surface, very durable product. Hello, hello. Come back up. Do the same thing I did on the top of the uh, shark's back. The fin, and then I'm going to um, wrap around the corner slightly, and then do some mark mating down the, on the back side of the dorsal fin. I need to, just for my own satisfaction here, I'm going to take out the little highlight in the eye. Look at him. A little bit of life there. All right. How do I want to do this fin? The back, the back fin. Hello, hello. here. Come back this way. And I gotta blend these two areas together. That curve. So I'm going to do this. Clean up that leading edge there. And one final mark to make. And that final mark is carving out this little polka dot right there. I don't know if it's a, technically a polka dot. If there's only one of them, there's a little spot. Let's call it a spot. There's a little tail spot. So we've got our little uh, great white shark, and he's finished. And there he is. Actually, I want to. I'll do a couple more marks actually. Not quite there. I've decided to make a change. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Clean up his nose.
Where are those sheep? Take off them little lines. Nothing too big. I just want to reinforce this line. I think that does it now though. So there we go, now we're done. Yeah. Now we're done. Sweet. So there he is. A little great white shark, he's finished. Ta-da. So. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And I will, uh, I'll be back on probably tomorrow during the day to carve a couple more sharks to continue Shark Week. So thank you, thank you. Have a good night. And I'll talk to you guys later.